Okay guys, so this video we're going to be talking about hex beam spreaders and specifically the hex beam spreaders that I've made for my field portable hex beam um, if you've been watching the channel. So I want to talk to you about some of the considerations, I want to talk to you about um, some of the things that I did, some of the things that maybe I don't recommend, um, you know, and just why I made the, the decisions that I did. So, but before we do that, we're just going to do one of my, uh, my little drawings again. Um, so if we put together our, our uh, hex beam so we've got a centre post we've got a base plate like so, like that so then coming away from the base plate you have a spreader arm like this ok now it curves up because it's got a support rope going across like so now on the centre post, you've got connections for all the different bands. So you've got 20, for my, my, my example, 20, 17, 15, 12 and 10. And you may have six, okay? So, because you've got these connections here on the centre post, parallel to those, um, so in line, aligned, you need to have connections for, or uh, points that you can actually run the elements through as they run around the hex beam. And that will become apparent in a minute when I actually show you the pieces. So on our uh, on our spreader arms, we have with a marker here. So that would be your twenty, your seventeen, your fifteen, your twelve, and your ten, something like that. Um, so that would be your your elements like that. Okay. So we need to basically create these spreader arms. Um, and we need to basically be able to put them together so when we connect them and, and connect them in such an easy way to the um, centre post or the base plate that they connect easily and quickly. And that's what I'm just about to go and show you. So well, that's the little bit of background. So this blue bit here is the thing that we actually are going to make. Now, looking at the um, the base plate, this is not the one I'm using, but it's, 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 it's very, very similar. I've done a video... Um, on this and I actually have a playlist, I'll link that playlist down in the description and I'll also link the bill of materials so everything that you're, you're going to need to actually make um, the hex beam or a uh, sub-assembly part thereof. Now, um, we are using, these are um, 11 millimeter tent poles, camping poles, okay? That's one that I've already modified, this is one um, as they arrive. Um, now, Making a decision on what poles you want to use. Now, I've used these because they are strong enough and they're very easy to get a hold of and they're not too expensive. Um, so that's that's how I've come to that decision. Um, and they should be available anywhere in the world that you may be. Now, as you can see, I have um, aluminium tube here fitted into these uh, hydraulic um, uh, clamps. And these just fit in nicely in there. There's a little bit of play, but it's just, it's really nice. So that's how these go in here. So you just have six of these connecting all the way around. So really quite nice uh, and simple. Um, before doing this, I originally did this with uh, eight millimeter uh, rods, poles, because I used these for my 10 meter moxin, but they just weren't strong enough, far too, too, far too much sag. So I just wrote those off. So again, these are 11 meter 11 millimeter poles, which I'll, I'll, I'll link down uh, in the bill of, bill of material that's down in the description. So that's our poles that we're going to be using. Now, put that to the side. When you actually receive these, they come like this. So they come with a pole and they have this uh, connector, a ferrule on the end. But what I tend to find is they are very shoddily uh, put on and they nearly always will pull off like that. Now I've had this one off already, but you can see you've got this horrible glue in here, right? Now, when you first receive these, first thing I do is I try to pull these off. If, if they don't pull off, fine, but if they do pull off, great, because then we'll fix them. So what I always tend to do is, very, very simple, I'll just remove the glue from this. So normally I'll just scrape the glue off like that, blah, blah, blah. Or preferably I'll get some sandpaper. Like this, give it a rub down, like so. I won't do that, but you'd want to remove it, but you also want to rough up the surface just a little bit. 
And then on the ferrule, you want to maybe try and clean that up a little bit there. Get in there what you can, try and scape it what, what, what you can. And after you've done that, you just want to use some super glue. Now, I love using this Gorilla glue. This comes with a brush and nozzle. This is one I've had for quite a while, and I think I need to change it. It's getting quite thick, but it's still pretty good. These are not that cheap. They're about £7, UK pounds, so like $10 or something like that. But it's excellent stuff. You don't need a lot. A little bit on here. Uh, push your ferrule, if I can find it. Push that back on. Now there's a little stop here, which stops it going any further. So you just push that on there, leave it, and it glues on. And that should be good enough. But I actually go one step further. Here's one that I've prepared earlier. This is one that's been uh, re-glued. But I've also used glue lined heat shrink on here and there is absolutely no way um, that this is actually coming off. All right. So to make each one of these arms for your hex beam, I need um, four of these poles. Now, because I've been doing the experimenting, I've left three at the original size, which is approximately 97 centimetres long, which, which is to here. So I'm, I'm not talking about the ferrule. Um, about 97 centimetres long and I've got one at 65 centimetres long. I'll put the total length up on the screen, but again it's noted in the bill of materials on the um, spreader arms tab. You can get the exact dimensions on there. So if you were going to do this, what I would say is average out the lengths and remove a little bit from uh, each one. So once we've got our arms prepped, we can actually start you know, building our arm assembly. Now this is one that's completely finished, um, so this would be ready uh, to use in the field. I'll take this off, um, and you can see that it's all stuck together, which is really, really good. Because if we look at the ends, the poles actually have this black uh, shock cord going through it. Now this shock cord actually comes uh, with these poles, so that's really good. You don't need to buy that. I'm not saying it's the best, but it comes for free. So. I'm not going to complain. Now, you need to um, see these little clips here. These are actually to hold the wire elements. Uh, and I've done a lot of research on these and what to use. And you can see that I've got a little cut in them. These actually come... Uh, I don't have one that's not being cut. Um, but there's, there's, there's one that's off it there. And you can see that I've just put the saw through it. I use my bandsaw, but you could just use a hacksaw. Um, to put that in it. This is a different design that I've actually tried. I didn't like this one. While it fitted okay, I found that it was far too loose. If we actually fit this one on, it's it's much tighter. Okay. Now you may be thinking, oh that's not strong. That's you know it is for, for what we are going to be doing. Because as the line comes through, we hook it in here and it pulls up against this edge and you're not going to pull that off. Not There's really not the tension um, uh, on these. Now, in order to stop them moving, I've put little bits of glue-lined heat shrink on here. So these just simply bottom out like that. So the tension's coming this way. And then we've got the one for the next band. So this is a really simple idea. Um, I wish there was something just a little bit more low profile, but um, but hey ho, you could actually cut this off and put a little slot in here, that would work. And um, we've got some other previous ideas that I, I I have tried and I didn't like them. This is a stainless steel jubilee clip or hose clamp, three or four, um, and I used a little bit of barrier pipe, so this was to basically thread the um, uh, the wire through, but in order to do that, I needed to thread them individually doing this solution I can just hook it in. Here's another solution, similar again, this is a stainless steel um, a Jubilee clip and this is a D-ring. These D-rings are actually incredibly strong and if you look at like so the commercially made hex beams, a lot of them use a, what they call a, a cable cleat and uh, one of these um, on it and they, they'll last outside. You know my commercial we made uh, SP7 IDX was outside for eight years and, and, and it didn't deteriorate. So, um, this is actually, I'll take these off here. So I, this is a five band version. So I've got five of these. One, two, three, 
four and five. Now, if you want to know the positions of these, again, that's down in the bill of materials. Um, but you can actually set out your hex beam, get all the tension, get them all averaged out to the length where they need to be. Once you know exactly where they are, then apply your heat shrink. But I'd be curious to know, you know, what ideas do you have for this? There is another little type of spring uh, clip. Um, like a, It's like a, an alternative for uh, a Jubilee clip. I'm looking at those if I actually go and do this again. Um, on the end, so on the far away end section, so this is a 20 metre element. This is the 65 centimetre section. You can see that I've got, um, uh, this is a stainless steel um, a keychain ring. And you can see I've drilled a hole through the ferrule and I've just hooked that through. Um, again, video down in the description how to make these. But these just these S hooks just hook onto it and I've just crushed them into place so they won't come off. So really simple, not much to say about that. Um, yeah, so that's our that's our spreaders. Um, really simple. So you need to make six of these assemblies up. Okay, so there is a little bit of work there. It is a little bit time consuming, but I find it quite um, quite enjoyable to do this work. And once it's done, it's done. Um, and then I just keep them joined together. So this is a, a, a bungee cord, like so. Tie it together. Oops. It's always like that when I'm doing it on camera. Yep, like so. I'm thinking of getting maybe Velcro straps for this. Um, and that's how I'll actually I'll, I'll go about for doing this. So that's our finished um, spreader arm assembly. These are the heaviest parts of the hex beam. Um, I think they're about 0.6 of a kilo, 600 grams, so it's about a pound. Um, and that's just because of the wall thickness of the of, of, of the tube here. I wish it was thinner walls, but I've struggled to get it. As I say, we need to make this and we need to make it to a budget. Otherwise, it's just not uh, worth doing. Okay, guys, so let me know your thoughts if you're building along with the hex beam. Hopefully that's given you some ideas of how to actually put this together. I incredibly simple. Um, and you know, you really can't go wrong. Okay guys, 73, bye for now.